The restoration of the abandoned RX-7 has really come a long way. In the last couple of months, we have completely transformed this car. We've ripped out the old and nasty interior and replaced it with a brand new shiny interior. We've also taken care of many electrical issues, including the taillights, the headlights and the cluster illumination. And probably the biggest thing, we've ripped out the entire engine, disassembled it and got it ready for the rebuild. And guys, you know, working on this car is really, really fun and I've been really enjoying it until now. But at this point, to be honest, I really cannot wait anymore to drive this thing. To drive it, well, um, we first need an engine. So let's build ourselves one. Now, as you can see by the mess on my hoodie, I've already prepared many, many things, including the rotors. I packed them fully, clearanced all of the side seals, which was really, really a pain in the butt. I've also cleaned all of the necessary engine parts, the E-shaft, the oil pump, chain, counterweight, etc. So everything's ready for the installation. And guys, let me give you a quick rundown on what I'm actually rebuilding here and what changes I've made to this engine. Well, first of all, the compression of the 13B wasn't all that great, which is why I pulled the engine in the first place. I decided to basically replace everything, including apex seals plus springs, side seals and their springs, the corner seals and, well, corner seal springs, as well as the oil control rings and, again, plus springs. On top of that, I replaced all of the gaskets, coolant seals, o-rings, as well as the front main and rear main seal. And as an honorable mention, I've also decided to replace the two stationary gear bearings and the two Torrington bearings off the front stack. And with everything looped up, it is time to put our front housing on, which will enclose the front rotor. Now we can put the infamous apex seals and their springs into place. This is pretty fiddly, but with a bit of patience, this will be done in no time. And by the way, I'm actually splitting this video into two parts, because I know it's pretty technical and there's a lot of talking, so I don't want to make this too long so you don't get bored. And now, I will need to lube up the rotor bearing to prepare it for the e-shaft being put in. And after putting the second dowel o-ring in, we have to face the hardest part, getting the center iron on. To make it work, I need to slide the iron over the e-shaft, but to slide it over, I need to prop up the e-shaft from the bottom of the engine with my knee and simultaneously slide the iron over. And trust me, this center iron is not light. And because even the slightest bump could cause the coolant seals to fall out or the apex seal corners to pop up, we now have one last chance to check if everything looks good before slamming the iron on. Now that we've got the scariest part out of the way, we need to put the coolant seals in. And I guess I just got lucky here, or maybe the brand of coolant seals I was using is just easier to work with, but putting these in was much easier than most of the videos I've watched about 13B rebuilds made it out to be. Guys and I know I should probably not say this right now because we're still in the process of building this engine. At first it's like really, really intimidating, but guys, to be honest, I, if I can do it, seriously, anyone can do it. I have no idea what I'm doing and it's really, really straightforward. It's just like building a giant set of Lego. So if you're in the situation where you are thinking about getting a rebuild or I don't know where you have to get a rebuild, um, guys, don't be intimidated by this job. It's really, it's really, really straightforward. You can just stick to the workshop manual and everything will be okay. And that's our coolant seals installed. Just gotta make sure that they don't twist up on themselves and everything looks good, which it does. So now we're ready to put the rear rotor on. 
And guys, I am no professional at this, so definitely take my opinions that I'm sharing with you with a grain of salt. And also, let me clarify that there are certainly risks associated with rebuilding your own engine, especially if you've never done it before. This is exactly why shops exist that offer professional rebuilds. And if a professional is watching right now, uh, I'm officially sorry, please don't scold me in the comments, because I know that I've probably done 20 things wrong already, so just remember, um, yeah, I, I, I don't even have an excuse for that. Guys, I think the best way to summarize it is really that when it comes to building one of these, it's literally just patience. Take your time, don't rush anything, and at the end of the day, you will have a running rotary engine. And yes, while saying that, I can already see it coming that this thing will not even turn over. <laughs> like, mm, it only requires patience. And then it doesn't even turn over. That would be fun. But just take this from a guy who really has no experience experience with like mechanical stuff whatsoever and you know I make my mistakes and that's totally fine you're all you always keep learning okay guys and we're actually making super super good progress as you can see we already got the front iron the front housing center iron rear housing and now it's time to put the final iron on and well, this involves first obviously cleaning it a little bit more and then putting all of the coolant seals in and then, well, we got ourselves a rotary engine. 